Yeah, this is gonna be a weird one, as the title implies. Not the ordinary thing I talk about, but last night I received a prophetic dream, no shit, that I needed to talk about this. So, let's just roll with it. Is it weird to like Monster Musume? I bring this up because I have noticed that this particular harem series, and there is a lot of harem series out there in the, uh, the zeitgeist, um, th this is the one that most people seem to jump upon. At least, um, even people that do like anime, that enjoy watching anime, will jump on people that like this series. I'm not making a broad generalization, I've just seen it happen with Monster Musume more than other series with the same basic premise. Um, for example, this is usually how it goes whenever you get into a conversation with somebody about Monster Musume. You know, you're a fan of it, and they're not. Man, I really love this series, Monster Musume. Oh, what? You like freaking bestiality porn? No, no, I don't like bestiality. I just, I just like the story. Yeah, okay, you have fun with that horse fucker. I mean, that might have been a little bit overly dramatic, but look, there was a magazine article I remember reading once, and uh, it was a, it was a United States uh, publication, but it was like an anime magazine. I forget the exact name of it. I'll put it up here if I can remember it. But when uh, there was an article in there about Monster Musume once, and uh, by the way, it might end up getting dubbed. I'm not sure. I think this was like news that it might be getting dubbed, but this was like easily over a year ago. Anyway, I read the article, and it basically came down to I could tell that the author of the article had no idea what he was writing about or he didn't actually read the series because he did mention stuff like that he mentioned like something along the lines of bestiality and like the main character you know having sex with uh these uh other monster girls uh when in reality that he never has sex with them that's that's actually a fun thing with a lot of harems is that you have the main character who's a guy i mean there are reverse harms but the most you know the, the most prevalent uh you know type of this series is is the you know male and then a bunch of women you have the main character who is usually the most bland featureless not a very interesting kind of guy you know kind of the most boring average person you can think of and yet for some inexplicable reason he is surrounded by the most attractive women on the planet that all want his dick and it's just, it's just weird. It's like he's either surrounded up by them in his everyday life, or he ends up living with them in some cases, like Rosier plus Vampire, Sekirei, Sora no Otoshimono, Monster Musume, you know, that's how it goes. And it's not really difficult to understand why these series are so prevalent and why they're so popular. It's, uh, it's a typical male fantasy. That's what they're going for here. It's like, okay, Here's an average Joe, just an, a normal guy, like most people, and then he's just ended up surrounded by women. Isn't that an interesting premise? I mean, most, most men, I think, most straight men would be very open to that kind of idea, right? So why does Monster Musume get all the shit? You know, Rosiera plus Vampire, that had monster girls in it too technically. Um, you had Sora no Otishimono, which were like alien angels. You had uh, Sekirei, which were like superpower girls who had to have their true abilities awakened by the uh, by men, you know, or, or women in a few cases with Sekirei. But the most part is that um, there's, there's some spin on it. There's some, you know, gimmick to the harem to make it somewhat interesting. You know what I mean? The real reason why Monster Musume in particular gets so much flack is of course because we're not talking about humans, uh, human-shaped characters. Like in Rosera Plus Vampire, you have very human-shaped, um, monsters in that one with like vampires and succubi and witches and shit like that. There are other creatures in that series that don't take on human guys, but, uh, the, the general, the, the cast of the, you know, the harem that the main character has, uh, Skune, that's all like human girls. Uh, Yuki Ona also are in there. Uh, but then you get to Monster Musume. You have a Lamia, you have a centaur, you have a slime, you have a mermaid, you have a fucking spider woman, you ha no, not that spider woman, although, either way, mm, you have a fucking headless Dullahan, you know? And, and, yeah, so I can understand why that one is getting so much focus here. Um, look, I'm not gonna sit here and try to justify this through bullshit. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, I read Monster Musume because of the story. The story in and of itself isn't really that unusual or different or something that's like really, you know, wow, this completely revolutionized the harem genre. No, the, the series name 
is everyday life with monster girls. So a lot of the chapters are typical slice of life stuff just with monster people thrown in. That's all there, there really is. Um, most of the chapters of Monster Musume involve, you know, the main character, Kimihito, you know, he's going through some mundane task, like, I'm gonna go shopping, or let's go out for a run, or let's do this, or let's do that, uh, and then a monster girl tags along, and then a few others show up, there's at least one scene in the chapter which involves gratuitous amounts of fan service, uh, you know, there, there's a few chapters where they go on trips to places, ironically, there has not been a beach episode yet, although that's probably gonna happen at some point, um, you know, so they, they go to interesting places, and the designs of the monster girls are certainly unique. Um, but the plot in and of itself is nothing really that new. Uh, there is kind of like a subplot going on here with Kimihito that was brought up in like the beginning of the story that he has to pick one of the monster girls to eventually marry. And this was brought up like like once or twice, but in the in the general sense, it's not really that important. It's not really brought up all that much. And even then, that is not something that's brand new when it comes to harms and stuff like that. But no, no, no. Um, reading Monster Musume, getting down to it, and am I, am I interested on who Kimihito is going to pick to be his wife if he picks anybody? I'm not. Am I interested in which new monster girl is going to be introduced in the next chapter? Yes, in fact, that's probably one of the main reasons I'm reading. Uh, am I interested in the main cast? Yes, I am, but it's not just because they're monsters. Uh, I, like I said, each of their personalities is very unique. I also find the characters themselves to be pretty funny in their own unique ways. Uh, in fact, this series in general is more comedic in tone than most harms that I have read. And you know what? I'll be straight up honest with you with 100% transparency. I've masturbated to each one of the main cast in this series except for Pappy. And I'm kind of proud of that. But, uh, yeah, everyone. Even Sue, which I didn't have a thing for Sue at first. And then she showed up in the, when it was in the, uh, the mermaid arc with, uh, Mero going to check out her, like, going to, like, Atlantis and see her mom or whatever. And you had that scene with Sue coming out in, like, the skin-tight bodysuit and shit like that. Like, that, okay, that, that did it for me. I don't know about you. Um, but I don't see that as a bad thing, necessarily. You know, it's just, it's a fantasy. You can indulge in your fantasies. Go for it. Oh, and a few people watching this right now might have figured out, oh, okay, Tekken. That's how you swing, huh? We we crack the case. You're into snake women and slime people. <laughs> no. Like, for instance, I've jerked off to Centauria for Monster Musume. Does that mean I'm into fucking centaurs or horses? No. She's a blonde anime girl with big tits, and I just happen to like anime girls with big tits. It's just kind of my thing. Honestly speaking, most of the times, I don't even pay attention to the fact that they're monsters in some instances. Maybe that makes me a better person because I'm viewing everybody as the same, or I'm a horrible, horrible oppressor because I'm shunning people for how they really are and treating them as a sex object. You know, bottom line, any issues that might arise from it that people might come up with, like, my god, Matt, you jerked off to a horse. You must want to fuck horses. I'm like... Dude, fictional character, fictional series, don't worry. I'm not actually into fucking horses, alright? You can take that whatever you will, but I will go about my day jerking off to whatever I feel like is jerk-off material. And that is the magical world of anime that we find ourselves in today, ladies and gentlemen. Now, separating the border between, you know, fantasy and reality, that's, that's, that's something that you have to keep in mind here. As long as you have a clear distinction of, okay, this is fantasy, this is fictional, this isn't real, alright? Bestiality, on the other hand, that's a pretty big, you shouldn't, don't, it's, it's against the law, don't do that. For, for any number of reasons, not the least of which being it's illegal, probably shouldn't fuck a horse. Um, but as long as you got that straight in your head, go for it, buddy. Watch and read whatever you want. Alright, this was a very scattershot of video. I literally just filmed this after I woke up. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this will be Teching 101, signing out. See ya.